archives of this building, the Hall of Justice, are filed thousands of strange stories, more fantastic than any ever printed in a book. The criminal cases of a great city. And here is the office of the man whose job it is to see that those cases are marked closed. Well, that's all right. Come right in. The public prosecutor will be very happy to see you. He's free now. He's just waiting for some other people to arrive. Sorry. With this set of golf clubs, Andy, I just couldn't resist the temptation. Sit down, make yourself comfortable. We're uh, working on a Dawson case. Maybe you remember Peter Dawson, the millionaire. Or maybe you don't. His only claim to fame was a collection of rare orchids, which he kept in a greenhouse adjoining the hall of his home. Peter Dawson died five or six years ago. His two children, Tommy and Jane, became the wards of a Mr. and Mrs. Groves, who now live in the old Dawson residence. The initial facts of the case seem to be these. Mr. and Mrs. Groves were out for a drive, but Latch, the greenhouse keeper, was there, as were the two Dawson children. Hurry! Sorry to bother you, Latch, but we went for a drive and Harrison forgot his house key. There's been an accident. An accident? You tell me. When I got here, I found him in the greenhouse. He'd slipped and fallen and hit his head on the edge of the tub. He's dead. Dead? In the greenhouse. Well, that's about what happened up to the time this office was called into the case. It seems the medical examiner had some doubts about Tommy Dawson's death being the result of an accident. So Lieutenant Evans and I went out to the Dawson residence and talked to Mrs. Groves. It's all our fault. All our fault. We should never have left him. A boy 18 years old? Well, surely Mrs. Groves is reasonable to assume that a boy that age could take care of himself. But he was ill. He's been ill ever since his father died. Uh, what was the matter? This is something I don't like to talk about. We've kept it hidden ever since we came here. Both the children are mentally incompetent. Oh. Well, tell me, Mrs. Groves, about this greenhouse keeper, Latch, who discovered the accident. Could he in any way have profited by young Dawson's death? No, no one could profit. No one at all. If one child dies, the estate goes to the other. If they both die, it goes to a scientific institution. There's nothing tangible or rational to explain what happened. It's completely without rhyme or reason. Tom, Tom, the Piper's son, stole a pig and away he run. I beg your pardon, Tom, miss? Tom, the Piper's son. Oh, I forgot to tell son. you, uh, Jane can't hear. She's been completely deaf since a child. Well, that must be my husband now. Oh, well, let's go have a talk with him. Thank you very much, Mrs. Groves. Mr. Groves? I'm Lieutenant Evans. This is Stephen Allen, public prosecutor. How do you do? Oh, the police? Yeah. Well, how do you do? Well, that must be your car in the driveway. I'm afraid I blocked it as I drove in. Now, I'll move it right oh, away. Lieutenant Evans will move it. Oh. Pardon me. Mr. Groves, I'd uh, like to see the greenhouse. Well, of course. It's here, right off the hall. Well, this is it, Mr. Allen. Well, as you can see, we... Uh, I have quite a collection. Well, that's an unusual plan. Yes, this orchid is called the Devil's Heart. It was Dawson's pride. Also Latches. We had two of them. But one was destroyed when Tommy... Well, as he fell, he knocked one to the floor and... and destroyed it. I... Latch keeps it awfully warm in here. And by the way, where is Latch? He's taken a few days off. When Mrs. Groves and I rushed in here, we found the boy lying near this rubber tree. He'd had a piggy bank in his hand, but it was broken. Money scattered all over. Wasn't he a little old for a piggy bank? Oh, well, actually, it belonged to my wife. She used to put all of her quarters in it, just a little habit. What was young Dawson doing with it? Well, he was unbalanced. 
kleptomaniac. You mean he had stolen it from your wife? Yes, I suppose so. But we had to watch him every moment. Once he managed to sneak out with one of the orchids. Fortunately, we were able to get it back before he had harmed it, before Latch found out about it. And Latch thinks more of those orchids than he does of his life. Well, Latch keeps this place much too hot. Oh, Mr. Allen, I... Oh, this... I, I'm sorry for this heat. Do you mind? No, not at all. Hey, where is everybody? Oh, thought you'd run out on me. Here are your keys, sir. Oh, thanks. Anything wrong? Uh, oh, no, no. I had a hard day downtown. I'm a bit tired, that's all. Oh. I wonder if you gentlemen would join me in a little refreshment. Be glad to. Good. I'll ask Mrs. Groves to make us some tea. Tea. You know, uh, Mrs. Groves may be right about that kid. Peter Dawson's will turned out to be exactly as Mrs. Groves had told me. I had sent Miss Kelly out to the Dawson residence to get a copy of the will. I'm Patricia Kelly. Mr. Allen asked me. Oh, yes. Won't you come in, Miss Kelly? Surely. Pardon me, please, the phone. Hello? Oh, yes, this is Mrs. Groves. Oh, the travel bureau. You've made a mistake in our tickets. There should be three tickets. Yes, we're leaving tonight at 8 o'clock. I'm sure I told you we were leaving tonight. Will you let me talk to the manager, please? anyone was in here. I know who you are. You came with the tickets. I'm Patricia Kelly from the public prosecutor's office. I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting so long, but the will was upstairs and Mr. Groves is dead. That's quite all right, thank you. Oh, dear, she's using my scissors again. Goodbye. Why, it's a mother goose, Ryan. There was an old woman who walked a crooked mile. She found it. Part of it's missing. But that's all right. I'll have Mr. Allen return the will as soon as he's looked at it. Jack and Jill went up the hill. Jack and Jill went up the hill. Jack and Jill went up the hill. And just then, Mrs. Groves came in. But that little sweetie pie Jane wasn't fooling me. She's got more in her head than those Mother Goose rhymes. Old Mother Hubbard. There was an old woman who walked a crooked mile. Jack and Jill went up the hill. Just a sweet, innocent little girl with a slight tendency toward homicide. Well, see you in the morning. Hmm? Bye. Oh. Good night, Pat. <sighs> old Mother Hubbard. Was an old woman who... Jack and Jill went up. Give me Lieutenant Evans, please. Evans? 
Leave me at the Dawson home as soon as you can. Yes, the Dawson residence. And hurry. Hey, you know, I bet when the Groves come back from their trip and find we've been ransacking their house, they're not gonna like it. Hey, that looks like something left over from a nightmare. Take this stuff back to the office. All right. Latch was trying to protect another one of his rare orchids. But fortunately... Yes? They're all here now, Mr. Allen. Fine. Ask them to come in, please. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to bring you back from your trip. Why didn't you let us know there would be an investigation? We would have remained in town. I won't keep you very long. Because we've come to some rather definite conclusions in this case. One of them is that Tommy Dawson didn't die from an accident. He was murdered. Latch, why did you attack me last night? Mr. Allen, Latch mistook you for a burglar. Mr. Groves, how does it happen that the handle of your golf putter is bent? Well, I accidentally hit a big rock with it. A big rock on a putting green? You could have said that you didn't know it was bent, Mr. Groves. That would have been the truth. Now, on the day of the murder, you said you went for a ride. And when you returned, Latch let you in. Mr. Allen, why do you keep casting suspicion on Latch? That's as silly as though you were trying to cast suspicion on Jane. Yes, Latch let me in the house. I had misplaced my key. Yet, when Lieutenant Evans moved your car and used your ignition key, he let himself into the house. He unlocked the door. Yes, Mr. Groves. Your house key and your car keys were on the same solid steel key ring. If you'd lost the keys to the house, you'd have lost the keys to the car. You couldn't have taken a ride. As a matter of fact, Mr. Groves, the handle of your putter isn't bent at all. All right, all right. I was mistaken about the putter. But what does that indicate? That you're a liar, Mr. Groves. You're trying to shield someone and doing it rather awkwardly. You didn't kill Tommy, but you know who did. He's trying to make out that I did it. I'm not trying to make out anything, Latch. Because I know who killed Tommy. And how, and why. And where the murder weapon was hidden. Huh? It's all right here in this book. This book? I don't get it. Well, you will in a little while. I still don't get it. You remember Tom, Tom, the Piper's son? Yeah. What happened, Tom? Let's see. Tom, Tom, the Piper's son stole a pig and away he run. Exactly. Except in this case, it was a piggy bank. And when he tried to run away, Tom was beaten. Yes, beaten to death. And where did old Mother Hubbard go? Of course, to the cupboard. Mm -hmm. In the cupboard was where we found this putter. The blood stains have been washed off, but not quite thoroughly enough. Latch, you know what this is? Yeah, some kind of a heathen idol. Mr. Dawson brought it from the Amazon. So you can hear, Miss Dawson. I thought so when you mistook my secretary for the girl with the tickets. If you couldn't hear, how would you know about the tickets? I didn't think she was as wacky as she acted. 
throwing all those clues around. How do you like that? I had to break down your deception, Miss Dawson, to establish our case. I'm sorry. Well? Yes. Yes, I can hear. I've been able to for a long time. Only I've been afraid. Afraid for years. Silly and stupid, I thought. But I'll tell now, I'll tell. I was in the house. When Tommy was killed. I know. I didn't realize at first that you were afraid to speak openly. I didn't know you were trying to tell us something in nursery rhymes. Not until you mentioned Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill? Yes, Jill came tumbling after, remember? Miss Dawson thought she'd be the next one to have an accident. Actually, she was mistaken. There was no such intention. You tried to keep Jane looking mentally incompetent so you could control her money. You tried the same thing with Tommy, but when he planned to run away... Latch killed him. Latch was in the house. No. Tommy was killed before Latch arrived at the house. As a matter of fact, before you took your ride. Miss Dawson told us who killed him. She said there was an old woman who walked a crooked mile. In her book, she crossed out the word man in the poem and substituted woman. Very crooked mile, Mrs. Groves. You're under arrest for suspicion of murder. Why, you're not... Grace, Grace, please. Earlier in the case, Mrs. Groves said it was without rhyme or reason. Apparently, it had both. It's nice having you with us. Be sure and come again, won't you?